Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to get historical option data from Robinhood. Now to get this data, you do need to have an account with them because we will be passing in our username and password. I also submitted this function to the package developer so that he can add it to the actual package. But in the meantime, we could use this function to require historical data for options. The good news is that the package developer did submit our function to get historicals for crypto. So if you go to Robinhood, and then we call the function under get historicals crypto. It is now added to the actual package. So you don't need to use the function I created. You could just call it from the package. The same thing will happen to this wrapper, but you could just use this function in the meantime. So here are some of the packages we're going to require. We're also going to need this mod JSON function that I got from the package developer in order to format some things. So I'll go ahead and run that function. Other than the username and password, we're also going to have to pass in the underlying symbol, the interval, and the interval can be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, hourly, daily, or weekly. These are the intervals I actually tested and that work. The type, so whether it's a call or a put, the expiration date, and the strike price. So we'll actually go through an example. So here I'll just assign these. I want to get the put at the 1450 strike that expires 3-5-2021 and our interval will be hourly data. So the first thing we need to do is establish a connection. So this is the URL we're gonna create. We want only active options. We're gonna pass in our type, which was a put, the chain symbol, which was VXX, and the strike price, which was 1450. So we're gonna go ahead and create the URL. We're gonna pass in our bearer token. We're gonna to use get and add some headers to get the data. I will then format the output and convert it as a data frame. And if we take a look at that data frame, we will now see options for that strike for different expiration dates. And what I really need from this data frame is the option ID. So if we sort this by expiration date, I'm gonna subset the row that matches our expiration date that we pass in, in order for us to extract this actual option ID. But first I'm going to convert the strike price to a numeric value. So here's where we actually extract the row that matches our expiration date that we pass in. So if we take a look at OP, here we see the expiration date that we passed in. And if we scroll through, we can see that this is the actual strike price that we wanted and the option type. All right, so let's go back to our script. All right, so as I mentioned, the intervals I actually tested were five minutes, 10 minute, hourly, daily, and weekly. You can let me know down in the comments if you find another interval that actually works. So we're going to create another URL by passing in the option ID and the desired interval that we want. So we'll go ahead and run that line. We're going to send a request by passing in the URL and adding some headers. I will then log out from Robinhood and then I'm going to format the output and extract the data frame. So if we take a look at the data frame, here we see our actual options data. So I'm going to go ahead and format these timestamps. And another thing I wanted to point out is that we don't actually get volume data. From what I've seen, this column always returns zero. And we also see two additional columns for the session and whether the data is interpolated. You might see these set to true when using daily data. That just means that it's not the actual data and it's estimated. All right, so if we go back to our script, I'm going to go ahead and format the timestamp. I'm also going to add a couple of more columns so that I know what strike price, what expiration type, and what underlying symbol this is for. So if we run this block and we take a look at our data, we actually see that our timestamps are in the proper format. We have our open, close, high, low price, volume, the session, whether it's interpolated, the strike price, expiration, type, and the underlying symbol. So after we get this data, I'm just going to return it. And that basically concludes this function. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run some examples. I need to run the function first. So I'll get historical options data for Apple. The interval will be hourly. This will be for a call option with the expiration of 3-12-2021 at the 122 strike. And of course, you need to pass in your username and password. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And if we take a look at OP, we do see hourly intervals, the open, close, high, low, the volume, the session, whether it's interpolated, 
the strike price, expiration, the type, and the underlying symbol. All right, so let's go back to our script. I'll go ahead and leave these two additional examples so you can try them out. But what I wanna actually do is actually plot this. So the first thing I need to do is convert these two numerical values. I'm gonna convert it into an XDS object and then format the column names. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. All right, so I'm gonna use chart series from a quant mod by passing in our XTS object. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in a title, which will include the underlying symbol, the strike price, the option type, and the expiration. I'm also going to add some technical analysis. So I'll go ahead and run this. And if we take a look at our chart, so it looks like everything returned correctly, except that we don't have our 50 EMA, and that's because we don't have enough observations to calculate it. So in future videos, I will try and come up with a script where we can actually try and trade these algorithmically. And I'll try and see if we can create another function to send option spreads to Robinhood. But I'll go ahead and post this script on GitHub so you can play with it and see what you can come up with. This concludes the video, guys. I really hope this was useful. Let me know what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.